previously on Adequately Advanced Magic. Are you three the unpaid interns? Yes. There is a little note underneath the directory that basically says that you need to have a key card to go up to each level. Wolf Tread thinks the unpaid interns. You deserve unpaid reward. He hands Kirkir and Niklaus a snack voucher and a guest card to the second floor. As you enter, a tall, blonde, elvish woman apparently hears her footsteps and then pokes her head out. And she's like, psst, I'm gonna try the mystery lizard. As soon as Hercules like, eh, he spits it out, he's like, Bleh. Well, thanks for helping out. Let me finish this report real fast. Do you guys mind running it upstairs? Eventually, you do reach the top, and it is a very spectacularly decorated office. So, Niklaus, you have the folder on the train, and here, here you have the folder on the prison. Should we just take these guys? Welcome to Falcon's Reach, a city in which magic is technology. You're listening to Adequately Advanced Magic. Here, here, Jack and Niklaus, the three of you wake up in Constance's apartment. You feel rejuvenated, and you also feel like you've leveled up. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sparkly. Yeah. Throughout the night, you think about wolf treads, muscles, <laughs> and managerial style. We learned a lot we in our internship. And the three of you feel like you're better versions of yourself. I do. I am ready to set up some red tape. For once, Audrey is actually asleep. It strikes me sort of odd that this is the first time you've actually seen her pass out somewhere. Constance is off hanging out with Gobzu, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Gobzu appears to be working on a painting. Oh. With Constance giving some some direction. Wow. You can hear Constance sigh exasperatedly. <laughs> That's a word, right? Exasperatedly. <laughs> Exasperatedly, yeah. Yeah. What do you guys do? Niklaus has a wander over towards where Gopsu is and um, takes a look at what he's painting. Yeah, you take a look. It's a still life of a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like a dumpster or like a mimic dumpster? Just out of curiosity. Do you, want, do you also want to go look at it? Yes. Yeah, I want to look at it too. <laughs> All right, the the three of you crowd around Gobsu, and he's like stroking oh, my chin. Y'all are making me nervous. Why is that, Gobsu? Well, you know, when you have an audience and you're trying to do something, it looks pretty good, Gobsu. Here, here, roll a investigate check. That's a three. <laughs> yeah, it's just a dumpster, <laughs> but it's a very well painted dumpster. Gobsu, your your paintings have gotten better oh, overnight. Thanks. Has uh, Constance been giving you good advice? Constance is like, ugh, well, obviously I am the best <laughs> teacher painter. Counterfeiter. I mean, Jack sees the painting and takes a step back because then he now has started to think about the killer painting. <laughs> the Klaus has morning brain and his PTSD hasn't kicked in yet because he's still repressing the memory. <laughs> <laughs> Constance accidentally bumps the painting and it scares <laughs> the shit out of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a spell coming to like Niklaus's hands. He's like, wait. <laughs> Constance sees that and she's like, hmm. But she doesn't say anything. Should we figure out what our next move is now? I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Unless we want to, we could spend an hour, you know, finding breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> or we could uh, look at the stuff we got. Let's, yeah. let's look at the stuff. We can yeah. we can have some uh, energy bars while we peruse the the files. I mean, all things considered, last night went pretty well, so maybe we're on a roll here. Famous last words. <laughs> Joey's like, TPK in the works. I don't have the stuff. You guys have the stuff we got, right? I mean, we have it. We can just... We're going to lay it all out on the table. Find a table and, 
and take a look at it. And... Yep. The three of you pull up slash borrow <laughs> one of these easels from Constance, and you, the three of you do the thing where someone finds a piece of red string somewhere nice. and a bunch of thumbtacks, <laughs> <laughs> and all of the documents go up onto this easel. Sweet. With some really non-sequitur connections. I think you mean brilliantly creative <laughs> deductions deductions yeah going deep so in, in the corner it, it does say Horten's shadow puppet master question mark <laughs> <laughs> naturally but yeah the first file that you've received is information about the train and there's two parts of this one the other one the file about the prison which actually has a name it's called edgefield prison as the three of you put documents up from this file, you see that none of the words make sense. Like, they're nonsense words? Yeah, everything is just garbled, letters are in random places. Does it look like a code? Do a investigate check. Eight. Switch the dice, switch the dice. You just assume that some low-level government bureaucrat can't type. <laughs> you know, I think I'm 50-50 on this one. <laughs> Jack tries to look at it too, but he doesn't realize that it's garbled text. He just... It doesn't appear to be a different language, right? No. Okay, well, does Niklaus have any insights into why it's off? Do a arcana check. Okay. 21. Oh, yeah. You've worked with somewhat secretive documents before, maybe not the most secret, mm -hmm. which is which is the Falcon's Reach designation. <laughs> <laughs> But you do know in certain circumstances that the corporations every now and then will use illusory script Magitech. I um, share that observation with my um, compatriots, that it may be um, encoded information. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Can we uncode it? There's usually a way to do that. Do you think maybe Constance or Audrey could help? They seem pretty good at magic stuff. We can check with them. Yeah. Jack yells to Constance to come over here, please. Hey, Constance, come over, please. She's like, ah, what do you want? Uh, Nicholas can explain better. Something with magic. I don't know too much about that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> it appears these documents were encoded with some illusory script. Do you know a way to get to the, the true information beneath? She takes a look at the file and she says, Ugh, Come on, don't they teach you this in school? Magic tech school. The only real way you can see the illusory script is if you have true sight. Oh. You can't dispel it, otherwise the written information will disappear. What's true sight? It's a <clears throat> thing that lets you see fake things, truly. Like, like glasses? It's a spell. Oh, oh, okay. Alternatively, you could wait 10 days. Oh, after 10 the, days? We don't have 10 days. The train's gonna be here in two days. Yeah, Constance, what are you thinking? <laughs> Jack says that under his breath. He, he doesn't really <laughs> like Constance. She thinks she has a bad attitude. <laughs> She's like, uh, well, why do you guys need to go to the prison anyways? Reasons. Well, the, the reason was cause to get the magic check for you. <laughs> well, why don't you just get the, to the train before it gets to the prison? Right, but the information on the train is also <laughs> encoded. It's not, actually. It's not? No. Herker, you said this was encoded. <laughs> I said this was encoded. <laughs> he points That's... randomly at, at a piece of paper. <laughs> Dude, but the string ties it over here. Jack did that string. Did someone tack it in the wrong pile? Jack looks away. Oh my god. Constance is just like, ah, and then she goes Team back to help work. Gopsu. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Nicholas, you take a look at the train files, and there is no illusory script here, but about half of it is heavily censored. Like blacked out? Yeah. Mm. And not like we can't just uh, change our PDF uh, settings <laughs> to, to No, you, you can't just highlight it for it to show up. <laughs> I don't know. Is the Falcon Breach District Administrator that technologically savvy? No, they just use black highlighter. <laughs> so well, what, what, what can, can be read? we glean from? Yeah. yeah. The three of you take a look at the train files. The first part covering the payload of the train has a list of Magitech and Magitite, and you do see that there's a couple of Fabricate Magitech listed. There is another section within the section that is labeled Special Cargo, and all of this is heavily censored. The Special Cargo? Yeah. For some reason, whoever was doing the censoring is leaving random articles. <laughs> 
So it's like the and like a and and, which is totally not helpful. It is not. This section also notes that the prison car will be empty. The next section covers the schematics of the train system. There's a little diagram. It details three train cars. There is a cargo car, a control car, and a prison car. It also has some details about the monorail that carries the train, namely that it runs about 30 feet in the air and that the train is powered by some sort of magitech. The next section covers security, and this section is also heavily redacted. It notes that there is a something 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 blacked out in the control car and a team of something 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 in the cargo hold. The other part of the file, which includes the route, notes that the train is taking the northwest route to the Edgefield prison. There are no unplanned stops. And there's a line here that says any deviation in route or unplanned stops will trigger an aerial security response. It also notes that the Magitek that would normally be delivered to West Ovaria is going to be delivered on the return trip, and there's no date given for it. It also gives the time that the train is heading out based on the time that you obtained the memo, which was overnight. Essentially, the memo arrived on Monday, the three of you obtained it Monday night, it's now Tuesday, and then the train is going on Wednesday. What time is the train going on Wednesday? It's an early 8 a.m. So that's when it leaves uh, the central spot. Yep. And it's not stopping till it gets to Edgefield. Yep. Do we know how long that would take the train to, to do that? Like, when is it scheduled to arrive at Edgefield? It takes about an hour. One hour in transit, okay. How does the monorail work? Can we just, like, stand on top of it? Or is there, like, components there that, uh... Just based off of common sense. Hypothetically, you could stand up there, but it would be pretty dangerous. Do we know how fast a train moves? Does it say in the schematics the speed? Yeah. It's a math problem. <laughs> it's going pretty fast, about 60 to 80 miles per hour. How many feet per round is that? <laughs> <laughs> Lots. Wow, it's 100 feet per second. Wow. <laughs> so 600 feet per round. Oh, that's fast. <laughs> yes. It's very, very, very fast. But it's starting from within the, the walls of the central city, right, Joey? Yeah. Probably not something we could just jump onto. Not safely or easily. And we probably also can't derail it, too, because it's on a monorail and it's elevated. I mean, we could it, probably it derail also, it, but that um, would The air trigger, response. Uh, yeah, the air oh, response, which... Right. I mean, we've already had some experience with aerial security responses, so... Uh, <laughs> Do we have to go undercover? Well, we can't get to where the uh, where it starts. That's true. So I guess I don't know what we can do to get into it. Well, if we destroy part of the rail, I mean, they probably will know that, right? Or they'll stop and they'll see and then they, they stop and then they can't continue. And then that's when we can, I don't know, do something. I mean, we can, <laughs> we can do a loud, we can go loud. We can stop it somehow and then try to get what we need, fight the people we have to fight, and mm -hmm. then leave before Vyra shows up. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Which is very risky, because they probably show up pretty quickly to this type of thing. Yeah. Yes. So we could tr but that's one option, right? The other is to try to somehow get on the train t and then not alert Vyra so that we have more time to either sneak or like disable the security or defeat the people that are there. I mean, the hard part is we can't get... Jack also asks, well, what, what if we... It's going to stop at the prison. Could we meet it at the prison? There will be a new layer of security there. Mm. Also, we I mean, have to figure out how to get into the, the prison, too. Yeah. Joey, the paper said something about the train going back into the city would be carrying Magitech. Is that... Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, except that there's no date given. Right. So it's unclear right, when, right. when this would happen. That's true. Do we know what it, the terrain situation would be like around the track? Like, what is what is it like where the track is running? Like, what is... Is it in the middle of buildings? Is it more open fields? Like, what is the terrain like? Judging from what you saw back at the administrator building, it's usually pretty closely sandwiched between buildings. And there's like a little... There's a little culvert, essentially, underneath where the monorail runs. Okay. Like, if, if the train weren't going so fast, it sounds like there might be the potential to try and sneak on in transit, but I don't think that'll work. I mean, the, while we probably could, we can always jump on it. It's just, will we survive the attack? 
<laughs> Will we bounce off and <laughs> die plowing into a nearby building? <clears throat> if we somehow get it to stop, we could try and sneak on somehow. No, if we stop it, I think it's going to be guns blazing type thing because we don't have time to the yeah any sneak. any stoppage or change of the route and the that arrow response will come but what if the stop is or, like or like the track is one broken. or two of us have to be creating the distraction and then a third goes after the uh the magitech but i'm i'm saying like what if the track gets broken or something like you know and then they have to stop to fix it or they don't think it's it's necessarily bad they just think the track is broken they stop pretty sure the uh the response team probably would just stay just until stay. the train arrived wow. at its location after that you know yeah i'm sure they do these routes like relatively often and then anytime there's any sign of a problem they just increase the security right or they have maintenance teams checking it periodically yeah. And we could always try to convince them to like radio in. It's like, hey, situation normal, everything's okay. How are you? <laughs> take a take a hostage. I mean, Let's yeah, not take hostages if we don't have to. <laughs> but it's possible that the bio response would ignore anything coming from the train as part mm-hmm. of their, their procedures. Yeah. So. Also, I suspect when that security response is coming, there's a a certain difference to uh, casualties. Yeah, they're just there to protect the property and the interests of the corporations. Do we care about casualties? I mean, we would Within avoid them. Limits. Yeah. We're not. I mean, they already tried to do something crazy to us in a flying like airship. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of done with being polite. <laughs> but if someone's running away, you know, yeah, I would just let them leave. Especially cuz and I think in this kind of situation we really got to focus on the objective and getting that and escaping safely. So our only option is just to guns blazing go in. <laughs> Maybe there's, there's some other way of getting on, you know? There's got to be another way. With all the technology available, something might be able to help us. Jack looks at his pack and says, I, I only have a jump and a heat metal Magitech. I mean, how far can you jump? If we need to, I can actually learn the spell. It's a, it's one of my available spells. What's your strength score? Right now? Not the ability modifier, just a... 17. So you would triple that. So I jump, what, 54 feet? Yeah. And then you would run before that. <laughs> so in a six seconds, you could travel 80 feet, which wow. is what? That's still much slower than the train. <laughs> <laughs> By an order of magnitude almost. <laughs> but it's still pretty, pretty impressive. You might mm-hmm. be able to, 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 you know, get on it at least uh, <laughs> with some epic combat rolls. Hopefully not die. I have actually a potential spell as an enhance ability. Let me see what that does. <laughs> actually, no, you're right. An enhance ability would do it. Uh, what's it called? Something cat something? Cat's grace. That's dexterity checks. If it's a strength, I can do bull strength. No, no, but it doesn't. Oh, that's strength have, checks. Uh, doesn't doesn't cat's grace have like a, actually they all have like some of them have extra things. It has like a falling damage thing, doesn't it? Has advantage on dex checks and doesn't take damage from falling twenty feet or less if it isn't incapacitated. So perfect. You only fell ten feet <laughs> <laughs> onto a, a train moving six, you know eighty miles an hour, but you know you're just that graceful. Yeah, it's just advantage on dexterity checks plus. Yeah, so no damage from falling. Easy. What does slow fall do? Oh, feather fall. Feather fall is yeah. If the creature lands, it takes no falling damage and can land on its feet. It's magic, right? So <laughs> we're, we're falling and landing. Can we use math? Mm-hmm. Like, like if we know, I mean, seriously, if we know the speed of the train, we go to the top of the building, <laughs> we do all the formulas and then jump. I don't know if we go to the top of the building, but yeah, that would be yeah. one way to try and get on to. I mean, again, if we I don't, had... I don't know how we, we enter the train, but... If, if we had feather fall and we literally just were like right above the train and just feather fall like the five feet to the train apparently the magic of the spell would somehow prevent us from taking damage <laughs> yay magic <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> what what vectors does feather fall affect <laughs> it just it only cares about i mean i mean the earth is spinning rather fast so obviously it has to take into account <laughs> Objects underneath you moving at a very high speed, <laughs> and the, it, just, it just cares about you falling. It's all by the conception of the the magic user. These are questions that were never meant to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! If the train is moving at this speed, it might slow down as it approaches the prison too. Mm-hmm. I just imagine I you casting know. Featherfall and you falling towards the train as you approach it. 
the spell accelerates you <laughs> to, to match the, the, the ground speed <laughs> of, what of what you're landing on. <laughs> that you just somehow, like, you're, when you hit the ground, your feet just, like, stick, and you get, like, this massive sense of vertigo for a moment. I think you gotta have a uh, spider climb for that, that section of the... Uh... It says you land on its feet. Sure. I guess it doesn't uh, think what happens think, after that point. I, I, I don't know how long that <laughs> landing on your feet lasts. That's true. That's, that's a good 60 point. 60 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour. You get that half second of, I did it, and then... <laughs> <laughs> what if What if we stop the train? Well, the idea is, what if we stop the train and we pretend to be the virus security force or rapid response force? I mean, that, that's not bad, because at least we can get on it quickly. I guess before, it yeah. It still doesn't prevent them from the real ones from coming, but at yeah. least it may give us an, like some extra time with the people that are there. Well, I mean, none, I, I don't know how fire works in terms of their... Or what they look like. Yeah, or aerial support. No idea what that means. No uniforms. So it's the same... Um, yeah, well, I would know what they look like. I don't think I would be able to replicate their... What about that costume I stole from the uh, the museum? If I just wear that, that should be fine, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Jack asks Nicholas, you can, you can read minds or you can control minds? I cannot control minds. Okay. And I can... I can't read minds either. I can only... Well, there's a spell that is available called Detect Thoughts, which is used by investigators often. It's a magic tech. And I can basically utilize that spell myself uh -huh. without the magic tech. And then I can communicate to what I've seen mm. for a short time. Could you communicate in their minds and convince somebody to do something? No. I mean, I'm still, like, uh, internalizing mm -hmm. the feeling of self-improvement I got overnight so it's possible <laughs> that's something that I could have learned and just realized I haven't had the ability <laughs> to <laughs> to utilize yet gotcha so that that is a possibility yeah I also have that ability to calm emotions which I <clears throat> use on <clears throat> Constance and <clears throat> Audrey <laughs> it makes uh, creatures non-hostile I mean that could be that could be handy if we're doing um... yeah, but it only works on like on people, right? So if there's like a construct or whatnot that would not work on it. Is there any information about people's names? Maybe we could find a person who's on the train and then convince him or her to do what we want. I think that would be under the security section. Okay, but it's, that's the heavily redacted area. So there's no names or anything in the documents. Maybe we could take another look. Do we see anything, Jerry? No, not really. Mm -hmm. The you guys you guys don't have to do this in like a void. Yeah, well, I, well, we did figure out. We were, I would ask Constance and Audrey for more um, their suggestions. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should do that. <laughs> There's also like undeclared stores if you want to like look at stores as well. Stores. Yeah, like, places like Audrey or that one guy that we bought stuff from that sell magic. Uh... Or not. So there are other resources we might have available to us, but I don't even know what we would look for like, as far as trying to get onto the train. That's the problem. I mean, any of the, the teleport stuff, that, that doesn't care about what you're, like, what, you know, you can teleport on, onto something moving. So don't you have to know what it looks like, though, like on the inside? I mean, even if we just get onto the train, there's probably ways in once we're on it, you know? Okay, yeah, that's true. Let's go ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack says, I, I already asked Constance for help. You, one of you guys maybe go. I don't like what, her. What is, what is Constance doing? Is she still just... Uh, yeah, she's still just overseeing Gobzu. Gobzu. What is Audrey doing? She's still sleeping. Audrey's still asleep. Sleep, sleep. The Klaus wanders over to Constance. Hey, Constance. Uh, yeah? Did you see our, our planning board? I I took a look at it, yeah. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Looks rough, guys. It's true. What do y'all got so far? Well, it seems like the hard part's getting to the train when it's moving so fast without having to stop it and alert the response team, you know? She thinks about it for a second. So what if what if you also go fast? How so? She says, yeah, so a while ago I saw this play. It was called The Furious and the Fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. I think it's like the 18th one. I, I, I think I've, I've seen a... I think I saw the, the the third one, and then I stopped after that. Yeah, well, in the play, they uh, they're like trying to get onto someplace fast, and they're like also fast. So we need to accelerate our life. Jack comes over too, because I think he 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 is also into the earlier Furious and Fast plays. <laughs> <laughs> and he's yeah. So do we need a vehicle or something? 
Do you have a vehicle? Vehicles and ramps. We're gonna ramp up next to the train. Does it does it look like I have a vehicle? Do you know where we can rent one? Rent to own. Does Audrey have a vehicle? Oh, didn't, didn't we store a vehicle somewhere? We had the truck thing that we got uh, from the police station, but I don't remember what happened to it. We, we oh, tried perhaps, to like hide perhaps, it somewhere, remember? Perhaps here, Herc here remembers. Jeremiah doesn't remember what happened to it. <laughs> And the the class remembers we we tried to hide it like in a culvert or something, right? Or under a bridge? Yeah, it's hidden pretty close by the museum. Probably needs some help to get fast enough. I mean, even if it gets us to like fifty miles an hour, that's, that's a true. lot more reasonable. Yeah. So I can I can misty step myself. That's not a problem. But I can't take anyone with me. I know that Jack, you have that jump match tech, right? Yeah. That that'll get you. I think that would get you on there. And then if I have the jump spell, well... Or if there's a Magitek we can get, maybe. Another one? Maybe from one of the stores nearby? Because it jump doesn't seem like it'd be a um, restricted... That's true. ...use, you know? Not yet. Just wait till we're done with it. (laughs) Right? (laughs) New new information. Now banned. All movement modification (laughs) Magitek. So let's go get a jump Magitek then, right? Or a couple if we we can. We should see if we get the vehicle, because the vehicle... Mm -hmm. If it's not there, then we gotta find another plan. Yeah, sounds good. Let's go find this vehicle. Do Do we remember, Joey, how how fast the vehicle could move? At the time, there was like eight of us on it, so it wasn't. It was not at full it was capacity. A motorcycle, wasn't it? Because we like sat on like a family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was a motorcycle. It was a side did it have a sidecar or no? It did not have a sidecar. Oh but God. Okay. lucky for you, there's literally like an engineer sleeping in the back right now. <laughs> oh. We have to wake she can, up. She can mod it up to be super fast. So I guess we need to let's go let's go check with Audrey or should we go find the the, the vehicle first? Um it was still everything on it was still fine, right? It wasn't damaged or anything when we hit it, right? I think so. So we should be able to let her sleep, but I don't think she's slept in a while. Yeah. All right. Let's go find the motorcycle. Let's do it. Sounds good. So we head out, shall we? Yep. 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 The three of you head out from Constance's place, and you head back toward the Museum of Falcon's Reach. The weather is pretty abysmal. It starts raining heavily, and there's sort of just this dreary pall as the three of you head out. Rick here hums happily to himself. <laughs> So where are y'all headed exactly? Wherever we uh, stashed the motorcycle thing. Okay. Here we go. How about you do a survival check? Survival. Change my dice. See how it goes. <laughs> Eleven. Mm, going up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> you have a pretty good memory of where you stashed this motorcycle. Every now and then you do accidentally run into a dead end or something like that, but that's sort of natural in this kind of urban landscape. Someone closed this off since we were here last. Yeah, there's like, in some places there's like a new building suddenly. <laughs> Eventually, you do head back to the bridge, or the uh, the underpass, right, in which you stored the levitating motorbike. You realize that it is gone, and <sighs> you see that there's some very large footsteps that lead away from the underpass. What kind of footsteps? Is it something? Do a investigate check. Two. My dice are cruel. (laughs) All you know is that the footsteps are huge. Those footsteps are really big, guys. Do I know what footsteps that size can be from? Do I ever come across that? I don't think so in the the city. I wouldn't see many. Do a history check. History. The history of ogres in Falcon's Reach. (laughs) Mm-hmm. 21? Time. Yeah. The only thing that would make footsteps this size and shape are giants. But guys, I think giants stole our magic motorcycle tech bike. They wouldn't fit on the bike. Yeah, that's very weird. Can we maybe follow they, the tracks? Maybe they got it for their child? Their child still might be kind of large, but giants? Giants aren't very nice, right? Depends on the kind of giant. Oh. This well. kind is clearly not very nice, as they have stolen our motorbike. To be fair, like it, it wasn't like they took it from our garage or out of our driveway. It was quite you <laughs> in, in, in a bush <laughs> <laughs> or a pile of trash. Like 
Are there any people around? Because it's kind of hard not to notice the giant. Maybe they know where the giant, or can tell us something about the giant. Yeah, there's some passerbys. Jack goes by and, and waves flags one of down and asks, Hello, hello, uh, any, any chance you've seen a giant walk around here with a stolen police motorbike? The first guy that you find, a halfling, he looks up at you and he says, Well, that's really specific. If you've seen a giant, that's fine, too. Have you seen a giant walking around these parts of town? Yeah, there's a family over there. Oh, which which way? He points down the street. All right, well, thank you, sir. Are they nice giants? Oh, yeah, they're definitely very friendly. All right, that's that's always good to have friendly giants in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty nice. All right, well, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Jack looks to the others in relief and says, Oh, well, at least they're friendly. That's always nice to be around. Should we go pay him a visit? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. The three of you head in the direction where the halfling pointed you in, and eventually you find what appears to be a house that is much larger than any of the adjacent buildings. <laughs> it's pretty crudely constructed, and it appears to have been set up in an empty yard. As you approach, you see a pretty sizable hill giant. He's sitting in part of the yard, and he has your motorcycle, and he's just like... Vroom. <laughs> Vroom. Uh, hello, sir? He turns around and he says, Hoi. Hi, I see you found our motorcycle. Your motorcycle? Yeah, we, we stashed it there in that pile of junk so, so that hopefully no one would, would take it until we could come back for it. Well, my motorcycle now. <laughs> that would That would be stealing and that would be bad. I don't believe. I don't think it requires your belief in order for it to be true. He turns around and he starts playing with it again. Is there something we could give you for the motorcycle? He perks up a little bit and he turns back around and he says, Rory like nut. Well, what was your name? Rory. R Rory? Rory. Rory. R Rory, if you like nuts, I have this Jimo snack voucher and they sell mysterious nut flavored bars. How work? Well, you, you go to a vending machine, there's one in the museum, and you put the voucher in, and you select the nut. I don't think he can fit in the museum. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, you get a nut-flavored mystery bar. It's very good. I like those. Big nut? Pretty big. All right. Nick, let's go ahead and roll a persuasion check. 23. I'm, I'm saving that this is now my favorite... Dice. I'm gonna set it aside. Place of honor <laughs> for the important rolls. Yep, all the non-combat rolls will be with you. <laughs> Rory says, "Okay." <laughs> okay. Well, here, yeah, I have the voucher, and I hand him one of the Jimo vouchers, and I even go through the steps of explaining where the museum is. Yeah, he's like, "Uh huh." You go left, and you go right. Uh huh. And it's got the collapsed like veranda on the front, but you just move that out of the way. Okay. And the inside. There's the vending machine. And you can probably just pull the whole vending machine out with your hand and then put the voucher in and hit the nut button. Okay. Does vending machine look like motorcycle? If you put it on its side, they're both vaguely rectangular. So you could ride it. Okay. In fact, if you broke the vending machine open, there might be a lot of nuts in there. Oh. <laughs> Who knows? It's a surprise. You get to open it like a present. Okay. He hands you the motorcycle. Just puts it on him. <laughs> he, like, picks it up with one hand and then, like... <laughs> He tries to hand it to me, and I just yeah. kind of move out of the way <laughs> so I don't get crushed. Like, okay, thank you, Rory. You've been very helpful. Thanks, Rory. Does Rory go now to the, go get nuts? Yeah, he just gets up and he leaves. Wow, perfect. Okay, guys, that was easier than I thought. Yeah, it was. Things are going well, guys. So far, so good. Are there any other the giants in the family around? You hear someone cooking something in the back. Oh. Does it smell nutty? <laughs> <laughs> It does not smell like nuts. Rory's going to be disappointed. Rory's going to ruin his appetite if he finds it. Yeah, you guys have just sent Rory down a path of nuttiness that he's going to regret later. He's going to come back and his significant other is going to be like, What, you don't want to eat my cooking? You never, you know, appreciate me. What do I do for you? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the next bonus episode. <laughs> Rory's domestic life. <laughs> Our best, most popular episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was picturing his his uh, his significant other is like um, like really intelligent compared to Rory, and they were planning on like selling the bike for like things they needed. And <laughs> now he's like down bad. 
<laughs> Poor Rory. All right, guys, we should um, see how this thing starts. Yeah, let's let's give it a try. Yep. So who who's good at driving? Who drove it last time? Didn't Audrey drive? I don't remember. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Audrey drove. That's yeah. probably true. Yeah. All right, so the three of us put our heads together to try and figure out how to operate the machine. <laughs> Can't be that hard. We saw her do it. Yeah, somebody go ahead and roll a intelligence check. It's not my strong suit. I can I can attempt it unless you want to do a check. No, you can go ahead and do it. Okay. Twenty non natural. Yeah, you've seen plenty of these vehicles before. You just have to hit that switch, pull that lever, put the clutch in, engage the magic tech, easy. Twist it, bop it, flick it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a throwback. <laughs> And it roars to life. Rawr. I'm picturing the, the Magitech motorcycles are actually like the engine is quote, quote unquote quiet, but they added like a, the fake sound. Like <laughs> a a <D-roar>. <laughs> and it's, it's like a, a dragon. It's a like dragon's roar. Like a little. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a minor illusion that you can like activate where it goes like roar. Yeah. There's another one that goes like. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> That's popular on the, the moped variety. All right, guys. All right. Shall we um, head back? See if Audrey's up? For sure. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Who wants to drive? I'll I'll give it a shot. All right, Jack. I'll need instructions the... though. Somebody's got to tell me how to where to go. Jack, take the wheel. Yeah, see, so you, you you twist this and then you turn that and then you push here. <laughs> Maintain pressure with the ankle. Okay. All right. I think you got it. Let's give it a try. I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, it takes you a couple of tries to get it right, Jack. Uh huh. But eventually you get the hang of it. You've operated some heavy machinery before, so it's not too difficult. Sweet. And the three of you head back to Constance's place. Plop, Jack plop, is plop, now plop, plop, officially plop. the motorcycle driver. <laughs> <laughs> the ride back is uneventful. You do pass some vehicles, the occupants of which look at you and are like, is that the police? <laughs> oh, is it still marked? Yes. Is it a police car? Oh my god, okay. That, that may be useful. <laughs> Could be, yeah. And the three of you arrive. Can we pull it into the uh, warehouse? Sounds like yeah. a good idea. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Jack tries it into the warehouse. <laughs> Oops. Is Audrey awake? Yep, she's awake. Morning, sleepyhead. She's like, oh yeah, that was. I had to, I had a pretty good nap. What have you all been up to? Adventures. We were getting the um the magic cycle back. Oh yeah, nice. It's still there. Uh, it was taken by a uh, Rory the Giant. We went through a battle of wits and. <laughs> the end of it, he agreed to relinquish the magic cycle back to us. Did he? Did he ask you a riddle or something? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> what's the plan now? There's that behind you, and I point to the 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 mess. The what's it called? The uh, always sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> board full of <laughs> string. We're trying to figure out how to get onto the train, and we figured that the, uh, the bike there would help us uh, match speeds with it. Yeah, I can see how that works. Do you have any suggestions for getting from the magic cycle to the train without dying? Well, let's see if you're, she does some math in her head. <laughs> have y'all tried grappling hooks? Well, I guess... It's not a bad idea. Yeah, what did you What did you tell her exactly like that you were going to do? So you had uh, one jump and... We have a jump. That's right. I can misty step, but then we have one other person who could jump, possibly, but there may be magic tech we could buy somewhere. We don't know how prevalent jump magitech is. Yeah, you could probably find it. The well, what about, what if what if y'all if what if y'all can make it up? That person could just lower some ropes or something, right? Well, with the speed the train is traveling, we all kind of need to go up pretty much at the same time. I think is is what we're thinking. I mean, if y'all need, I can drive too. Install yeah. some sidecars on those things on that <laughs> thing. So you're saying one person goes up with ropes and then we're all connected to it and so when they go up we all go up is that the idea does that mean we have to climb up a rope between two moving vehicles at 80 miles an hour yeah that that seems kind of risky ain't y'all ever seen the furious in the fast they Did, do that all also the time. we're playing D. I mean come on guys <laughs> do you, well do you think the the bike could go faster than the train yeah maybe if it were it depends on the payload though it depends on how many people are on the bike let's say there were four of us I think, yeah, if, if we could, if by the time the last person is crossing, uh, if the bike can be a little bit ahead so that the, the rope goes back towards the train rather than that mm. way the wind kind of like helps you go down the rope towards the train. 
Well, wouldn't a jump just be much more safer? Like, if we could find both two of them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But of course, you, you have to jump into the wind. Okay. You just gotta be, you know, confident in your ability. Sure. <laughs> maybe, maybe you want to inspire yourself <laughs> beforehand. If one person jumps and the other, you know, have the second person jump, maybe that's less confident in their jumping. You could have a rope between them. That's true. In case they miss that's the jump. Case, yeah. You know, you can, yeah. Or even a rope for the first person who does misty steps in case the first jump fails, too. Well, the problem with misty step is I don't actually move the distance between it. I appear at my destination. So, like, if right. I was holding the rope, I don't know what would happen. I don't know if it would just cut the rope in half or the all the rope would be with me. Oh, or, gotcha. Yeah, they wouldn't like string up in between. So that f- the first jump is there's no backup option for the first jump. I mean, I could take the rope with me, like the whole mm-hmm. length of it, and then when I'm on the train, I could try to throw it back down. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could weight the rope so it doesn't blow around in the wind. Yeah, we could tie something tie to something it. Tie something to it, but then that it's becomes like this thing that just might knock us off our motorbike. But maybe it's True. worth the risk. All right, probably worth the risk. I mean, it's gonna be risky. Yeah, so much risk. I mean, if we if we had a grappling hook like um, Audrey suggested, you could we could shoot the grapple onto it, and then that works too. You can still have the the jump as a backup. Yeah, yeah, that actually might be the way to go if we can get a get a grappling hook. So let's find a grappling hook and a jump match attack. Yeah, uh, those must exist in the market, right? Grappling hooks for sure. Yeah. I would think, depending I mean, on. If nothing else, that's just a hook with a piece of rope on it, right? Even if we can't shoot, the, we can throw it. Yeah, yeah. Audrey says, "Yeah, Constance probably knows some of the merchants around here." She's like, "Hey, Constance!" Constance's like, "Ugh, what do you want?" They look like they're about to bicker again. Constance, uh, Audrey was saying that you probably would know the people in this area that uh, would be able to sell some of the stuff that we need. Yeah, she's like, "Uh, yeah, I know a couple people. I know a guy." Can you set up an introduction or let us know how to find them? Yeah, let me mark it on your map. Oh, excellent. So this is now the grappling hook and jump and misty step plan. <laughs> and then once we're on the train, it's the make it up as we go plan. Yep. So we probably do want to target the prison car, seeing as it's going to be empty. Does the thing show which order the, the cars are in? Yeah, it goes cargo, control, and prison. Okay, so it's on the end. Perfect. That's handy. Well, the bank says we have 154. Really? That's not a lot. I have... Didn't we get some gold recently? The the bank shows 536. Does it? Oh, yes, it does. I guess I'd update. That, that's a sizable amount of money. Yep. It's not too bad. Let's go shopping. Yeah. Oh, I have six and, gold. Uh, shopping personally. montage? <laughs> Nick Voss says I have a, some few pocket change as well. Before we leave, I do ask Audrey, do you think it's better to have the police markings still on there mm-hmm. or to hide them? Uh, in my opinion, you should hide them. Constance is like, uh, no, you should definitely leave them on. I figure like once we're going with the train, it's better to have them there. That way people see it. They're not like, oh, why is there a weird motorcycle following the train? They're just like, oh, it's police doing police things. But I don't know. I think if they see us on the way, we just draw more attention. I, I like I like having them. Um leaving the marks on oh can we have like a like a quick remove thing over it like a sticker <laughs> audrey says yeah i could i could probably come up with something yeah that way we can just if we need to we can reveal the police insignia <laughs> yeah so what do, what do y'all want on this thing y'all want like a sidecar maybe i can give it some more juice more juice yeah, in this... a sidecar i think would be good okay, i think that'd be great and this police cover. Yeah, just right. so we can hide the police logos if we need to. Or maybe yeah, turn... Like, I'm not completely useless. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can turn police into lice. Useless. You can sense a bit of sibling rivalry. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> yeah, she says that. I look look at the, the bike again. Does it have like a siren mode where like the lights come on and the siren comes on? <laughs> yeah, it's like a bunch of color spray. Nice. So we could be like, pull over this train. <laughs> You're under arrest. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Do you guys have any other suggestions for the bike? No. I mean, if you could make it fly, can you make it fly? <laughs> Audrey says, no. You see, they. would you like a brief history about the fly Magitech? No, no, I would trust you. Yeah, what do you guys do? Towards the market. Yep. The three of you head towards the market to the stall that Constance has marked on your map. The three of you pass by these elvish warehouses again, and now they are, like, extra wary of you. <laughs> As you arrive at the stall, 
you see a very short white furred tabaxi, which is the like the cat race. Gotcha. He's wearing a three-piece suit and an ascot around his neck. Wow, fancy. And around him are his various wares. As you approach, he says, Hello, my name is Siesta, and I have wares. Hello, you said your name was Siesta? Nice to meet you, my name is Niklaus. Hi, I'm Jack. Pleasure to meet you. Can we see the wares? Where's the wares? Underwares? Yeah, seriously, is this like a clothing shop? (laughs) Yes, they are underneath the other wares. Well, the real question, do you have a jump magitech? Herkir's just looking at the, uh, oh, there, there is a list. Such, such, Such wares. Much wares. Are my wares to your satisfaction? (laughs) So far, so good. The three of you take a look around, and there's a collection of Magitech, some Magitite, some assorted goods, some weapons, a tattered business suit, a couple of grappling hooks. How are we doing on on ammo on the um, the impistols? I don't have many left. I I only have one shot left. Okay, yeah, we need to get you the module. Yeah. That'll be five shots, right? Yeah. You know, just, and he he looks at Siesta, Jack looks at Siesta and just says, you know, just in case something bad happens. Meow. <laughs> okay, 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 guys, si- sidebar. So we're we're going to discuss our purchases, Siesta. We'll, don't go anywhere. <laughs> he, he just sort of leans back, looks at you, and he says, Meow. <laughs> I like the spirit. Okay. So, guys, the do you guys remember on the schematic if there was a way into the train cars from the roof of the train car? Joey, do you remember from the schematic <laughs> if there was a way into the train from the roof of the train car? Not for these because they're connected up top to the monorail. That's right. Oh, it's like one That's of those. Right. Oh, okay. That's so right. So, what entrances into the interior were there? There's For each train, there's usually an entrance in the front and in the back. Is there an entrance on each uh, car? Like, is there a gap between the cars? Yeah, there's a little gap in between the cars. But we're trying to get to the prison one, which is empty, and it's the last one, so... Do they tend to have, like, a little balcony thing? Yeah. Old-timey monorail. Yeah. To caboose. So, if we go onto the roof, we can jump down onto the balcony? Or we could just try to go straight to the balcony. What do y'all think? Um, I'm confused. Which balcony are we talking about? Like, the the back of a caboose, but... Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so so this is so we already got onto the train. Now we just have to find a way to get into the train. Right. Gotcha. And we can't. Yeah, of course, we can't just punch our way through. Well, depending on what it's made out of. But <laughs> so this, this monorail is paper mache. <laughs> well, if I ha- if I enhance your strength, you will have advantage on a strength check. We'll just get you a very large can opener. <laughs> <laughs> Jaws of life. Well, I I, I, mean, I have a sword. <laughs> Could, <laughs> Siesta from behind you suddenly pulls out a giant can opener. <laughs> Siesta has where? <laughs> it's just, I'm just picturing for like giant tan, cans of tuna. I assume that was for his lunch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Siesta, we have our shopping list. You hand it over, and he looks at it, and he says, Meow. We're uh, spending a lot today, planning a party. Meow. (laughs) Perfect. Yeah. And we were actually hoping you could uh, answer a couple questions. You're wondering of this blowgun, does it come with darts? Meow. Yes. Are they just regular darts, or do any of them have special properties? Unfortunately, these are simple darts. But yours truly can put in a special order, if you would like. Oh, so you can't get that today then, right, Siesta? Mm, nope. <laughs> okay, well... We'll put that on the back burner for now, I guess. Yeah. Unless you want the, the regular darts for now. No, I'm, I'm good. You have your backup weapon for when the pistol runs out, right? Two short, short, short swords? I guess if there's something you want, you could... Uh... Well, we don't have much money right now, so much gold. Sure. Hopefully that'll change soon. Yeah, because we will, we are doing law-abiding activities. Meow. Speaking of not having a lot of extra funds, do you think you could give us a, a bulk discount for all this stuff? Go ahead and do a persuasion check. We promise just to any future wares, we will come to you first. Ice 
24. Damn. That is a good day for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Siesta says, Hmm. Yes. I believe this is the start of a very fruitful relationship. And he gives you the discount. <laughs> Yay. So you can take like a 10% off. Nice. nice. I hand over 500 gold. Exactly. Yeah, he takes it. For, for one jump, one poison spray, two grappling hooks, a compass, three level one magitites, one aid, one spider coin. Yeah, he takes the gold, and as he does, he looks at it and he says, Meow. <laughs> Siesta thanks you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. I guess I hand out stuff to everybody. So, Sweet. Jack, here's the poison spray. Uh, nice. This will come in uh, handy. Hand the jump over to Herc here. There you go. Mm-hmm. And the Magitite for it. I guess I'll leave the two grappling hooks with you guys. Since I'll be Misty stepping over. Right. right so I hand one to each. The compass, Herc here. You've been navigating us pretty well so far. Do you want to hold on to this? Yes. Wait, the grappling hook comes with a rope? Or no? Mm, I have like 50 feet of rope. Okay. All right. I can I hand that to have, you. I also have 50 feet of rope, so. Okay. I'll need that rope. So that leaves the aid in the spider climb. Uh, I guess I'll leave the spider climb with you guys, because I can probably just misty step to the the door. Okay. Standing area. That way, I'm not like struggling to hold on to the right <laughs> the roof. And then the aid, we can just use that that morning for the last eight hours. Sounds good. All right, guys. What do you all think? Mm, maybe a Hercule can take the spider climb. Sure. And that all the stuff is now divvied up, right? Yeah, yeah, because Jack, you you got your bulging muscles to hold on to. Exactly, <laughs> all my all my little feet muscles too. They'll help in um, traction. You grab with your toes. Yeah, exactly. All right, should we head back and see how Audrey's doing on the motorcycle? Yeah. All right. Yeah, the three of you head back. We pick up a uh, takeout on the way. For everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find some mystery rice. Oh, oh geez, always okay. a mystery. Always a mystery. As the three of you roll back in, you see that Audrey's still working on the motorcycle. Uh, Constance is working on, like, a totally unnecessary flowery design to cover up the police logo. (laughs) (laughs) Audrey sees the three of you head in, and she says, Yeah, this is going to take me a while. How long? A couple hours, at least. I'll probably just do it overnight. I had that epic nap (laughs) earlier today. At this point, it is evening time. We gotta be ready. The train departs at 8 a.m., so... Yep, so y'all can do whatever y'all want now, or y'all can just long rest. Is there anything else we need to do, guys? Jack wants to see if we can get one of the Constance's nasty paintings to use in our... No. <laughs> we probably can't carry that on. I don't... Unless, unless uh, you, Nicholas... You just roll it up on your back, right? Oh, but then what if it comes alive while it's on me? Nothing good. Then it's been nice knowing you, Jack. I was thinking, so, well, Nicklaus, you can you can just misty steps whatever on. You could just hold it. True. Yeah, I can carry it and then misty step on and then like open the door yeah. to the control room, throw the <laughs> blanket in and just close the door again and let nature take its course. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Let's see if she has one. We can ask. So Jack goes over to Constance hesitatingly, but says, hi, hi, Constance. I, uh. We were wondering if, you know, maybe maybe you could give us one of your security security device paintings for our for our attempt to get the Magitech V. What do you think? Uh, well, you already killed one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to bring this one back alive. <laughs> All right, do a persuasion check. Is, is she more persuaded because of his muscles? I remember her looking at them before. <laughs> yeah, she's like eyeing your muscles as you ask her this. <laughs> It's gonna uh, flaunt it, bro. Yeah, she doesn't seem to really particularly care about the painting. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, she's looking somewhere, possibly through you, at you, <laughs> and she's just like, "Uh huh, yeah, uh, yeah, just, just take it." Well, I'll, I'll grab one for you. It's in the back closet over there. You definitely do not open that closet. <laughs> I will not open that closet. Thank you so much, Constance. You're, you're a champ. Jack. Jack. Yeah. Ask her how do we keep it from killing us? I think Constance will tell us, right? Maybe it's got like a protective sleeve or something, or a. I mean, maybe there's like does it recognize friend from foe or like what? Oh, that's true. Well, when she gets back, let's ask her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she comes back with one of those hard carrying cases for paintings that are rolled up. It's one of those that you just like pop up the lid. Oh, gotcha. Like, Ooh, nice. So, so Constance, 
these paintings of yours, do they, will they attack us? Do they know who is friend, who is enemy? Uh, yeah, so they just attack whoever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a precision weapon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Well, and you just open it and then you unfurl it and it'll just start going after people? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll take it. Yep, she hands it to you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Costance. Um, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. She blushes a little bit. <laughs> Jack looks at the others and be like, I guess we can take it. I give him, I give, I give him a fist bump. <laughs> I guess we can take, take it with us. I don't know. I mean, yeah, we should definitely take it. I think we hold on to it for now. And then when I step over, I'll, I'll just hold it so it doesn't get lost in the wind. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe who knows what will happen? I mean, it's it's a good uh, things have not gone according to plan. This couldn't make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> so might as well use it situation. All right. That's a good idea. Well, that's... I think that's it for me. Huh? Yeah, we should just get some rest for tomorrow, oh. right? <clears throat> Speaking of rest, shouldn't we use our special mysterious disc? Oh, yeah. Yes. We have the um, the healing, power of healing compels you, right? Right. <laughs> And uh, Presumably. Parker, did, you're the one that wanted to, to use it since you already know a little bit about this healing mumbo jumbo. I know quite a bit. I learned a lot last night, too. Nice. Without, <laughs> without <laughs> Hopefully I haven't doubled up on that then. We'll find out. We will find out. Yep. So the three of you go to bed. I put on the mysterious disc device. Did the three of you go to bed? Hicker, you have a dream. You wake up in a bed that is not your own, that is completely unfamiliar to you. You get up, and you look in the mirror, and you're an elf. A bit of an older elf. Hicker's like touching his face and stuff. You grab a lab jacket, and you go to work, and it becomes very rapidly apparent to you that you are one of the few doctors slash healers that use traditional medicine as magitech. yeah as modern medicine now heavily depends on magitech and you you go about healing wounds for the poor and those that can't afford magitech Aww. and then later throughout the day someone runs in into your clinic in West of Area. You can still recognize it, even though it's completely different from what it looks like now. And this man brings you to a little boy that has been crushed oh. by some machinery. And it's very clear to you that he's he's a goner. He's not going to have much longer to be around. Mm -hmm. What do you do? It suddenly becomes a lucid dream uh -oh. oh so there's is there anyone else around yeah there's a couple of bystanders and onlookers all right i'm going to try and make the victim as comfortable as possible um and remove anything if i can that's uh could cause further damage i mean i don't know that i have anything in my possession to do healing you take a look around in your pack and you do have essentially a first aid kit okay Go ahead and do a medicine check. 16. Yeah. You are able to... Well, I guess, what do you do exactly? Well, is he, is he still under something, or is he... Yeah, uh, he's basically trapped and dying underneath this machinery. Okay. Does it look like if I were able to get him, I might be able to do more if the machinery was removed, or would I just do more damage to him? You take a look around, and you see that if you remove the machinery, it would just... I mean, it would be over... Okay. In that case, he'll start doing some some basic first aid to you know just provide comfort, as it were, and and say comforting things to uh, the victim. What do you say exactly? You're hurt real bad, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can for you. Stay still. Try not to move. Like hold his hand while I'm mopping up blood and you know finding injuries to you know put ointment on or whatever. The little boy holds your hand, and then he passes away. The elvish doctor, who is you, returns home and basically just collapses onto his bed and shuts his eyes as hard as he can. And then you wake up, Hirkir.
you have a plus one bonus to all medicine checks from now on. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Meanwhile, Jack and Niklaus, do you guys dream about anything in particular or just like sleep? Jack has a nightmare where everything goes wrong in our plan. <sighs> <laughs> Jack is our, our anxious member of the party. <laughs> First, Jack just doesn't get on the train, falls down and dies. But somehow he still gets to see everything. Niklaus does get on the train. And then they go in. And then I guess somehow in the hustle, like the uh, the painting gets loose. And it comes oh, out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but, but thankfully the door opens. And then because the, they realize that there are people on the train. I guess they saw Jack fall. So, so the painting rolls out and attacks them, like the train people. But then, but then the the aerial aerial thing, aerial r- r- security force, whatever comes, and that's when the dream ends. Way to get yourself out of the way first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you awake with a start. <laughs> Nicholas, what about you? Mm, he just has a dream about um, a different kind of train. It's like a, it's at night and it's windy, mist kind of going, and you hear a clack 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 clack. It's like an old like railway train, and you just as as it's rolling, you just hear he just hears in the coming from the the darkness with a little bit of moonlight, just like voices kind of going past as the train goes on, and then he he just wakes up. Yep. The three of you wake up, and it's morning now. Audrey has completed the motorcycle, and she appears to be taking a nap in the corner of the room. Gobzu is also like nearby. Is Constance awake? She's she's also asleep. She's like asleep in her quarters. Well, boys. We're going to be burning daylight soon. Yep. Are you all ready? Mm, yeah. Kirk here double checks his backpack, make sure he's got everything in there. The Klaus like cinches the straps and like checks his belt and pockets and makes sure everything's handy and ready to go. Jack says, I'm ready. Let's go. I think things will turn out okay. Don't y'all need Audrey to drive? Oh, yep. that's true. We all get in the bike and we're all like, <laughs> hmm, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> The three of you head over to Audrey, who's doing the waking up Uh Jack, Jack will just gently shake her. Yeah. She wakes up and she's like, oh, is it, is it time? It's time. Uh, she d- gently like picks up Gobzu and puts him over <laughs> to the side. And you go over there. And she's like, let's do this. All right. She starts heading over to the bike and then starts, activates the levitating part and then starts pushing it out. As the three of you open the door... You are greeted by one or two spotlights. Uh Uh-oh. And standing outside is a very familiar-looking four-door sedan and at (laughs) least two police cars. And it's hard to see because of the spotlights, but you hear a familiar voice go, Oh, look who it is. Hi everyone, this is Joey, your Dungeon Master friend. Thanks again for listening to Adequately Advanced Magic. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Sleep Cat for supporting our Patreon and for providing the idea for Siesta, the tabaxi merchant. He is definitely going to return in the future. He's actually very similar to NPCs I've made in the past. If you would like to help us select the topics for future bonus episodes or have your own character included in the campaign, Be sure to check out our Patreon and website at www.adequatelyadvancedmagic.com. Join us next week for explosions. Just so many explosions.